Hello friends, this is Dr. Banerjee from History Series. Today I am discussing the topic, the Industrial Revolution in Europe. Now what is the Industrial Revolution? The Industrial Revolution, now also known as the First Industrial Revolution, was the transition to new manufacturing processes in Europe and the United States in the period from about 1760 to some time between 1820 and 1840. It marked a period of development in the latter half of the 18th century that transformed largely rural agrarian societies in Europe and America into industrialized urban ones. In simple words, what is the Industrial Revolution? It is a change in the way work was done, a change from making goods by hand to using machines. First Industrial Revolution, historians conventionally divide the Industrial Revolution into two approximately consecutive parts. What is called the First Industrial Revolution that is lasted from the mid 18th century to about 1830 and was mostly confined to Britain. The Second Industrial Revolution lasted from the mid 19th century until the early 20th century and took place in Britain, continental Europe, North America and Japan. Later in the 20th century, the second industrial revolution spread to other parts of the world. Now how did it all start? Industrial revolution in modern history, the process of change from an agrarian and handicraft economy to one dominated by industry and machine manufacturing. This process began in Britain in the 18th century and from there spread to other parts of the world. In the 18th and 19th centuries, steam powered and water powered hydraulic machines came into use for industrial production. Although used earlier by French writers, the term industrial revolution was first popularized by the English economic historian Arnold Toynbee to describe Britain's economic development from 1760 to 1840. Since Toynbee's time, the term has been more broadly applied. So in short, how did it all start? It began with an agricultural revolution in the 1700 centuries. New ways of planting and growing crops were introduced. Rich landowners bought land of village farmers and enclosed it with fences. This was also called enclosure movement. This led to discovery of more productive farm methods to increase production, larger profits, small farmers now unemployed, moved to the cities to find work, new new cities grew. Charles Townshend learned that crop rotation led to longer lasting fertile soil. Jethro Toll invented a seed drill, a cart with a dropper that would plant seeds more efficiently. New energy sources were found that would help work new machines and inventions. Traditionally, human and animal labor were used to do work. 
wind and water had been used to move wheels that would then move machine parts in mill. Then coal was discovered to burn hotter and longer than wood and was used to create steam that would then be compressed in engines in order to move parts of machinery such as rotors or lever. Henry Bessemer discovered that coal could be used to heal mineral ore and remove the iron. Then he discovered that smelting coal and iron made steel. Now important inventions, steam engine by James Watt, spinning jenny by James Hargreaves, some more innovations and inventions, Samuel Morse telegraph, Henry Bessemer, Bessemer process, Alexander Graham Bell telephone, Edison and Lewis Latimer light bulb and so on. Innovations such as steam power, cheaper iron, the growth of modern banking and new machines that could do the work of several people in less time helped the industrial revolution. Capitalistic economy. Industrial revolution could happen only in a capitalistic economy. In the capitalistic economy, a new class of capitalists came into existence who were either owners of industrial establishments, factories, or could provide capital to such establishment. To produce commodities of common use with minimum possible production costs, to pay least possible wages in order to maintain maximum profit margins are the characteristic economy. This is the Venn diagram where we can see cottage industry and factory system and some common factors. Both are organized by capitalists. They used to buy raw materials, hired laborers or workers, but goods were made mostly for overseas trading. England, the birthplace of industrial revolution. In England, the atmosphere was suitable for industrial revolution. Large amount of iron ore and coal were available. The humid climate of England was suitable for producing cotton yarn. With this favorable conditions, textile flourished in England. At that time, England had established their colonies in many countries. So England could easily obtain large quantities of essential raw material at cheap rates from their colonies. England could also export the processed goods to the colonies and sell it there with large profit margins using their navy. The profits earned in the colonies made large amounts of capital available to the British merchants. Availability of cheaper labor made it possible for them to maintain optimum level of cost this factor giving boost to economy prepared favorable ground for the onset of industrial revolution in England. So why was England the birthplace of the industrial revolution? Because England had resources like harbors, coal, iron, workers, and a good climate. England had a wealthy upper class and bourgeoisie that used their capital to build mines and factories 
and buy machines and large farms for profit. England's economy was strong because it had colonies that supplied resources. England's naval superiority was an advantage because it protected trade routes. Effects of Industrial Revolution Economic nationalism, rather I can say rise of economic nationalism, was an outcome of industrial revolution. Arresting the economic growth of rival nations along with fervently pursuing the economic growth of one's own nation became very important. Establishing colonies mainly in the Asian and African countries if needed Fighting battles with the natives of the colonies were part of economic nationalism. The chain of surplus production was the effect of industrial revolution and in turn the economy based on surplus production supported economic nationalism and also imperialism. It began the vicious circle of continuously capturing new marketplaces, searching for sources of cheap supply of raw materials to attract more and more investors to safeguard their investments and so on. It resulted into limitless exploitation of the colonies. The effect of industrial revolution on India. Industrial revolution affected India adversely. As it was the colony of England at that point of time, it set the decline of Indian cottage industry. The administrative policies of the East India Company were made to benefit the British than the Indians. Railways made it possible to rural areas for sale. It turned into monetary exploitation of the Indians. Now the conclusive part, rise of colonialism, extreme nationalism, industrialization, concepts of racial superiority, aggressive colonial policies supported further growth of imperialism. The result was the immense expanse of the empires of European nations like England, France, Belgium. Germany, etc. That's it for now. We will discuss about colonialism in our next topic. Subscribe this video and thank you for watching.